How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video and I hope that you're keeping well and safe wherever you are in the world. So here we have two Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultras, both identical to the naked eyes, uh, but underneath is slightly different, namely the processor chip inside. So this one on my right hand here is running on Snapdragon 865 processor, and this one is running on Exynos 980 processor. So depending on which markets uh, you buy them from, you get something slightly different. They both have that 6.9 inch display, uh, 40 megapixel front facing camera, they, they can shoot 108 high resolution photos, they can zoom 100 times, uh, for example, and they can capture 8K videos, and it's, they're both on 5G as well, so there's not much uh, of a difference there at all in terms of, in general, uh, specifications. Both processors are manufactured on 7 nanometer process, so they're both designed to be very efficient, but there are slight differences in terms of the processor chips in there. Let's get into it and see what we are talking about here. So as mentioned, one is running on Qualcomm Snapdragon X65 uh, processor and the other one is running on Exynos 990 processor, both fabricated on seven nanometer process. But you might ask, but why? Um, the 991 here in the UK and uh, some with, are also available in, in some similar markets as well. It means that Samsung can make more money per devices uh, by not having to pay Qualcomm for that CDMA uh, monopoly and just stick to GSM only. Uh, for example, my 5G Snapdragon 865 version won't work here in the UK uh, because it's just not uh, unlocked for that, for that purpose. Um, both chipsets are paired with their own modems as well. So the Exynos one uses a 5213 Exynos 5G modem, whilst the Snapdragon uses the latest X55 5G modem in there. Furthermore, I did some digging, uh, some further digging into the chipset designs. And that's of the Qualcomm I know more about because I tend to ask them more questions and I have more access there compared to what I do with Samsung. So according to Samsung spec sheets though, uh, the 990 has a combination of two high performance Mongoose M5 cores at 2.73 gigahertz, along with two Cortex A76 cores at 2.50 gigahertz and four energy efficient A55 cores at two gigahertz. There's a lot there to remember. While the Snapdragon 865 has two new cores, uh, there's a single A77 core running at 2.84 gigahertz, three A77 cores at 2.50 gigahertz, with four A55 cores at 1.80 gigahertz. On the GPU side of things, the Exynos 990 has a Mali G77 MP11, so the 11 means shader cores. And the Snapdragon 865 has the Adreno 650 in there. Digging a little deeper, the Snapdragon chipset even uh, can even run much faster refresh rates uh, compared to what the uh, Exynos one's capable of doing uh, at the maximum rate. So if the, both devices were to max out, uh, the Snapdragon would be ahead here. The Snapdragon can also power bigger sensors. So if Samsung were to go larger on that uh, 108 megapixel, they can go even further with the Snapdragon versions. Uh, if you guys are interested in how they both hold up in terms of gaming, so graphics performance, camera, uh, there'll be a link in the description to my friend uh, Tech Chap's video uh, in terms of what he did and the comparison so you can see how they differ there as well. So far it's uh, apparent that the A65 device is far superior uh, but let's not complain yet. Uh, one thing I will say though is that on the paper, on paper one is obviously more powerful and more energy efficient than the other but in the real world for regular use you won't really notice a big difference between them like uh, if you see here comparing how quickly they unlock from idle um, even how fast they load applications, different applications, as well as how they load, how quickly they load apps from uh, running in the background, multitasking and all that stuff. They're very much uh, very similar. They're very much similar, very the same. There's not much difference here as well. Uh, but where it differs is the battery life, which is what this, uh, this video is all about. And before you get ahead of yourself in terms of telling me oh, you're a fanboy or whatever, or arguing in the comments below, uh, what, you, what you need to remember is everyone uses their devices very differently. So for example, to get this to do what I wanted to do in terms of testing them, I've had to max out on 120 hertz display with a lower res, uh, just to see how they hold up. Again, just to see how much they can handle that battery life. Also for someone like me, I take a lot of photos, I use a lot of social media apps, I use a lot of graphics uh, intensive applications on my phone. So again, my battery life will be a lot different to what you use at home uh, if you use it differently to mine. So things are fair and square, I've taken out the SIM cards in both devices because one's 5G, one isn't. So again, it means that you might get uh, some sort of differences there as well. So I've just left Wi-Fi on and I'm running an application that will help me drain the battery here. And on top of that, I'm also running a 24 hour long YouTube video, which uh, I didn't even think existed on there, uh, just to see how well uh, it holds up. 
So what does the application do? Uh, it leaves the torch light on. Uh, it performs continuous integer and floating point and double precision calculations to put load on that CPU on um, both devices. Uh, it also performs parallel floating point multiplication uh, to put load on the GPU as well. Again, something that really drains the battery. Uh, it also continuously requests GPS location to help drain the battery as well and continuously performs Wi-Fi scans and Bluetooth scans as well. It also shows the battery level uh, as the test is carried out and battery temperature. And I also got my temperature gone out to see the overall temperature performance on both devices as the test is going on. Again, just a caveat as well. This is not scientific in any way, shape or form. It's just something experimental for me just to see how well they hold up against each other. Throughout the test, the uh, Exynos was lagging behind in small dosage, so not drastic at all, leading me to think it's not as bad as you might think. Um, however, where you start to see a drop uh, is the last leg of the test where the A65 is left with 10% with, left with, uh, of battery and still going, but the 990 just dies at this stage. So yes, the 865 performs better uh, in terms of battery life. Uh, so food for thought when looking to purchase the S20 Ultra or the S20 in general. Uh, a statement from Samsung according to Sam Mobile, uh, a really well-known Samsung focused website, uh, shows uh, that Samsung is quite ignorant though to this experience that we speak of. Uh, the statement reads, the Galaxy S20 is a smartphone that's been reimagined to change the way you experience the world and depending on the region, the Galaxy S20 will either ship with the Exynos 990 or the Snapdragon 865. Both the Exynos and Snapdragon processors go through the same strict and rigorous real life testing scenarios in order to deliver a consistent and optimal performance over the entire life cycle of the smartphone. I think absolutely not because the performance is definitely not consistent, whether it's camera performance, uh, graphics performance, battery life performance, so I don't know what Samsung has been testing here uh, to prove this point at all. The battery draining app aside as well, I even uh, ran my S20 Ultra, the Exynos version with 120 hertz at full HD plus. Uh, I unplugged at eight in the morning uh, with me running social media, emails, calls, WhatsApp, photography, uh, even with no gaming and by 7 p.m. I was on 8% and uh, yeah, that was not good enough. Anyway, that's it from me in terms of this test. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below, uh, including your uh, battery life experience because I know everyone's been experiencing in different ways, shape or form. I've seen that on my Twitter feed. Uh, so drop them in the comments below. Uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave some links in the description if you guys want to do further digging and see what other uh, research has been done online. Uh, see if you guys want to check that out, do check that out as well. But in the meantime, if it's the first time or if it's your first time on the channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification as well. And uh, so you'll be one of the first people to know when there's a video on the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.